ก็ใช่ละเสียก็เสียละเฮ้ยยักยักดีเยักยักเด้งดีอ่าก่อยอ่าคอมคอลิกส์ we hope to be able to finish with the commissioner and his team so that uh, we won't have to convene another hearing on the commissioner and his team and we hope to end by 1 p.m. and if we are not able to finish by 1 then we hope to extend it by a small margin is that okay for you next is uh, Raymond Wong then Kenneth Leung, and then Paul will be asking in the second round. All right, uh, Raymond Wong, please. Thank you, Chairman. Well, today we heard the Commissioner and his team, and we heard their replies. When compared to the replies given by Timothy Tong yesterday, well, um, that uh, gave me some food uh, for thought. Well, Chairman, can I share that with you? Yes, please. Well, I think we are wasting life and we are wasting time here, and nobody would be held responsible. All right, everybody is saying that uh, is he's not responsible, and therefore is the fault of the community. You are not prepared to criticize the former commissioner. All right, uh, this is just a small dent, and you're actually uh, tarnishing the and the image of the entire commission. Well, we've been holding. Sessions after sessions are by the PAC, and we also have a select committee on Timothy Tong. Again, we also have another independent review committee coming up with this report. Honestly, well, today's topic and also this hearing is on report number 60, chapter 7. Supposedly, it's about our preventive education and enlisting public support against corruption, and part of the uh, value for money study involves. Uh, um, entertainment expenses and also duty visit and a mess that has been created. As a result of that, the PAC is now looking into this and both yesterday and today we are looking at this IRC report. Chairman, we have not been doing the right thing. All right, uh, they can always challenge you because uh, it's supposed to be the PAC report that we are studying. How come we are now looking at the IRC report? It has nothing to do with the PAC report, but in reality, that's not true because they are, all, they are all related. Raymond Wong, Raymond, sorry, we are, we are right. We have been doing the right thing. We are right. All right, that's what I'd like to hear from you. Still, how, man, how, many public, uh, how much public money um, have we wasted? And we have so many people here. How much are they paid? Other than those of us who are here, we are paid, uh, the, very, we are paid the least. All right. Uh, in the commissioner, in the commissioner's opening statement, he already indicated a very respond. He already indicated this. That is, uh, why has he got anything to do with this? And you already indicated that uh, you are not going to consume hot liquor. All right, you've made it clear already. And the CLD staff said that uh, they never consume any hot liquor. They never consume any wine. All right, that's your culture. All right. Uh, you address, uh, you, you, you're pointing a finger at the former commissioner, you're pointing everything at him. You are not trying to make improvements, so you do not have the intention of making improvements. All right, uh, this is the former commissioner. Of course, uh, you are the incumbent commissioner. You are definitely not going to do what he has done. And uh, given the PA, in the wake, in the light of the uh, PAC report and the IRC report, and in the future, we are going to come up with the PAC report ourselves. Definitely, you are not going to do what Timothy Tong has done. All right, uh, you can see that uh, he looks like a drunkard. So, what we think is for an organization responsible for fighting corruption, and in Hong Kong, we talk about a culture of probity, and you are the final or ultimate gatekeeper. You are supposed to fight corruption, and yet we have this situation whereby there is um, blurred uh, delineation responsibilities and obligations and so on. So apparently, all your staff do not have to be held responsible for anything. All right, uh, all right. Uh, you already know that we're going to talk about uh, five six nine. That's why Miss Mu has uh, prepared this, and uh, it's just a coincidence that uh, Gary Chen asked about this. And as a result, you were able to answer the question in accordance with your uh, scripted uh, speech. 
So we are wasting our time. Why do we have to have this meeting in the first place? The purpose of having this hearing is because uh, we did this uh, value for money um, study, but then all the focus of attention has been on Timothy Tong, and how now he's subject to criminal investigation. So my view is for the commissioner to come up with this um, statement today, and after I read it just now, according to your logic, there is no need for us to um, conduct such hearings. In paragraph 3, you said that uh, with regard to um, um, these two areas, I'll be explaining in a moment, and, um, in the, and then in paragraph 4, 5, 6, you explain that further. So the thrust, of, the crux of it is that uh, you did not cover anything up because um, some media agencies have uh, wrongly interpreted that. Uh, that's why it's of the view that uh, the information provided by the ICAC to the PAC might uh, try to cover up something or might have been misleading. All right, uh, all you're trying to say is that uh, it has nothing to do with me. That's the spirit of your statement. Because uh, in providing information to the PAC and in providing information to the IRC, actually you're talking about two sets of data because the scope of their review was broader and you're just uh, looking at uh, preventive education and enlisting public support against uh, corruption is the value for is the value for money study. I have not hit anything from you. Is that uh, you did not know what kind of questions you should be asking according to your logic. There is no need for us to convene this hearing at all, right? Why on earth do we have to hold such hearings? It's a waste of time, isn't it? Isn't that right? So, Commissioner, please understand it. Well, the reason why we are holding such hearings here, that's because we'd like to get to the bottom of the truth. We have already um, drafted our report. So, uh, we do you, do you not think that uh, we have nothing better to do? And at the select committee hearing, we are going to meet you again. All right, I've drafted many questions, and uh, many of us are actually following up on this. All right, on the two entertainment events. All right, uh, Paul has been asking you uh, closely about uh, the two duty visits, uh, Li Jiang and uh, Le Shan. Well, he said that uh, it's just uh, a tag on activity. In fact, uh, that's uh, supposed to be entertainment after uh, work. And then for duty visit, apparently there is no planning at all, all right, uh, for this particular year for the ICAC commissioner or the relevant staff in accordance with their functions and duties. Uh, how many visits would they be conducting and where would they be visiting? Apparently there is no such room. So you should have such plans in place. You should have got such plans. For example, this year, how many places I'll be visiting, how many countries I'll be going to, and what people I'll be meeting, and uh, who would be accompanying me on my visits instead of just uh, going to Yunnan. All right, it's like what uh, Timothy Tong said yesterday. All right, I'll, I'll be going to Yunnan, and Li Jiang is part of uh, Yunnan. All right, you don't have any responsibility at all. All right, the CRD is supposed to... Uh, uh, is supposedly the responsible coordinating uh, unit. So who should take up the responsibility then? Chairman, um, I'll begin with my questioning. Yes, please, Mr. Raymond Wong. All right, uh, you made very valid points, but then the thing is uh, we are trying to get to the bottom of the truth. We have not wasted our time. All right. In the IRC report, para 3.7, some members have already asked questions on this. The IRC, the IRC noticed that uh, during the term of the former commissioner, the expenditure spent on alcohol on procuring alcoholic drinks they have not uh, been covered in the expenses submitted. Well, generally speaking, uh, other departments would follow this practice, but then the CRD did not follow, and the CRD very rarely organize such activities. And within the um, uh, organization, they also had the Office of Strategic Research, which did not include the cost of alcoholic drinks in the majority of the entertainments uh, it organized. And the report said that apparently this practice, um, all right, different departments would have different practices. Just now, the commissioner said that uh, the CSO is like a Bible. All right, if you have this Bible, how come different departments would have different practices? So how, how would you answer the question, commissioner? In fact, Mr. Wong's question, 
was what we were discussing before the break. So I'd like to take the opportunity to ask Ms. Kwan and Ms. Mu to explain again as to this form and also the um, historical historical background to this. Ms. Kwan? Ms. Kwan? Well, I'd like to explain that um, 569 in June 2008 well, at the time when it was revised, I'd like to uh, talk about the circumstances surrounding this revision. According to our records, well, for the revised uh, 569 in June 2008, it did not show the reasons why we had to include uh, the cost of beverage drinks um, or beverages um, in the form. At the time when the form was revised, uh, we did consult the, red, the, red, the various departments and the scope of such consultation mainly was um, focused on the approval procedures and also the flow chart uh, involving the application. And we try to improve the efficiency in the application and approval. By the time when we introduced the revised form, we did not specifically remind colleagues that uh, the um, item on beverage would have to be included um, in the total expenses for entertainment. We did not emphasize that point and that's the situation back then and in rolling out that form we also did not say that uh, this is mandatory. Of course we hope that uh, Everybody would use that form so that uh, that would be more regulated and a flow chart or workflow would be smoother. Thank you. Ms. Mo, I think the situation um, is as uh, has been said. I don't need to repeat that. Well, in a nutshell, the CRD had no intention whatsoever to violate the CSO. We had no intention whatsoever to break it, but then in terms of the interpretation of the um, detailed provision, as I've explained uh, time and again that uh, the thinking all along is that uh, approval has been given by the Commissioner and uh, we've already applied for reimbursement for the expenses. That's why within that particular year, if there are other attainments uh, being arranged and if we bring along our wrong um, alcohol, then uh, we do not include that again in the form, whether or not it's in the final minute or in the uh, form, we would not include that. Uh, so that's uh, how things uh, develop. All right, I'd like to clarify this because uh, Ms. Kwan also talked about uh, the um, objective. All right, uh, can I refer you to uh, Gen 3, page 94, all right, in 2008, the reason why you had to come up with uh, Form 569. If you look at uh, the procurement of um, uh, hard liquor in 0708, uh, there was a drastic increase. All right, if you look at uh, 0708, well, when you procure uh, white wine, hot, uh, white wine, red wine 66, and then for hard liquor, 13 cases. So uh, in the past, uh, you did not, pro you had not procured hard liquor, so you started from scratch. Which page? Page 94. Page 94. Uh, page 95 for the Chinese version. All right, you said that um, you changed 569, and the purpose was not for that. But then when we read the documents, there must have been a reason for such a change. You've included beverage cost in the form, and then looking at your paper, sorry, uh, Raymond, I'll be taking up part of your time. So were you telling the facts? So why had you made the revision? Because we're trying to get to the bottom of the truth. So why this change? And this is a good change. But then afterwards, you did not take it up further. So please do not give us a reply because we cannot see the document. And it's very simple. In 2007, uh, in terms of the procurement of liquor, all right, 0607, uh, 36, and then 0708, uh, 66 for red and white wine, and then 06070, and then uh, that's hard liquor, and then uh, when it reaches uh, 070813 uh, and then 080916, so uh, by hard liquor we are referring to multi. So you can see that the expenditure 
on these items are shot up all of a sudden. So you can see the situation. So whether it was alcoholic drinks brought along or purchased in the restaurant is still a cost, and the cost will have to be included into the general sum incurred. And then you have to divide it by the number of people to work out the per head expenditure. That's how it works. So I, can't, I find it difficult to accept your uh, explanation. Why was uh, the money spent in the first place? So if you want to get more information, refer to the information supplied to us by you, the ICAC. Well, now people say that, well, it's only a, li it's only a drink, it's a small matter. But that is not the case. We're talking about rules and regulations. Raymond Wall. Thank you. It's actually a simple matter. I was asking why different departments have different approaches. There are rules and regulations, and there is a standard form. The standard form was uh, revised, and there must be a reason why beverages, food, and everything were included in the same bill. If the bill was separated, maybe it was uh, 280, and for beverages, 70. So if the, the bill separated, then there is no overspending. But if they are included, then there is overspending. We find it difficult to understand. There are rules and regulations uh, stating very clear what uh, the approach should be. But there are many different uh, uh, practices. But we're only talking about a meal. Is uh, is entertainment. So um, the CRD has a different practice from CPD, which is also different from OPS or the ADM, uh, depending on the on the parties. So um, so if it's uh, someone from the mainland, uh, some members from uh, some legal or law uh, institutions, then you will have to try to please them and uh, work around the system. The conclusion is, it's nothing to do with me. Then who does it have to do with? What is going to be the way forward? In paragraph 3.7, I'm also very interested in this. Is the Office of Strategic Research is under the ADM. Majority of the work is uh, related directly to the commissioner. Well, the commissioner is here. I'd like to ask. The uh, OSR, is it still there? Well, the um, commissioner has already said that uh, it was disbanded uh, at, uh, at an early stage. Well, then you, you don't have to answer, because I was going to ask who is responsible for it. Mr. Wong? Well, we, c we still would like to find out what the OSR did in the past. It was uh, set up in 2007 under the ADM, playing the role of uh, something like a think tank to conduct research uh, on policies and strategies and to um, provide support to the commissioner, including um, including to provide writing uh, statements and speeches for them and uh, receiving official content, uh, contacts. Well, it's now disbanded because the the work had, the work's taken up by other um, departments. And in paragraph five point six, bracket A, well, members are still asking about uh, Le Le Shan Li Jiao. Uh, this morning we heard from Ms. Mu that it was uh, the arrangements made by um, the lo the other party and not this not this party. Well, could you say no? Well, as I explained, that uh, in relation to Sichuan, the original itinerary included the Jiu uh, Zai but we turned them down. 
Yes, we heard that, but that is not the case for Li Jiang. As I said yesterday, the it was there to meet the pro procuratorate. If we could get the information about the itinerary and the activities, what was discussed, and we would know. And then what followed on were two activities related to sightseeing. They are just entertainment, but public money was used. Those add on entertainment uh, would increase public uh, expenditure. You might take uh, the people might take you just uh, to to a meal to sightsee, but it was an add on entertainment paid for by public money. Is that right? Uh, the, but the director did not go. Yeah, I know that, but I would like an answer from her because she made the arrangements on the ninth of January prior to uh, departure. It was a Friday, so uh, we could not uh, recall whether we saw that or not. Once it was received, it was reported immediately to the commissioner. So the commissioner said yes. So you can't, you couldn't say no. Is that right? You're talking about uh, a long time ago. I could not remember specific uh, exactly what happened on the ninth. But there was there was a procedure, a process. You mentioned this morning that for a duty visit. What well, the impression I I get is that for such a huge uh, commission uh, against uh, corruption, well, you have to make sure that these uh, duty visits are in line with uh, the functions of the commissioner. But there was no planning whatsoever. You just uh, play it by ear. That is uh, your explanation. There was no planning. That's one. And secondly, you were passive about the itinerary, and the commissioner agreed. You are the director of the CIS. You were responsible for coordinating the visit, so you should advise him that uh, he should turn that down, just like in C1. How come you did not remind him that for Li Jiang? Well, you said, well, uh, you did not know about the Sichuan one. But usually your advice was taken on board and you were responsible for coordinating the entire visit. You were the director. Is that right? Yes, uh, it was um, under the mainland liaison office or under the CRD, so it's under my purview. We only know about this information because of the IRC report. I did not say that you conceal it because there was no reason for that. I asked you a question and that was your answer. So when something happens, uh, you would uh, sometimes uh, you would advise him and sometimes you would just let him do whatever he wanted. But we don't want ICAC to adopt mainland practice that, well, you're my boss, you could do whatever you want, or to second guess what um, the commissioner would like, uh, to see what the uh, preference of uh, Mr. Pei was, and then try to accommodate him. But this is what we see now. Just now, Mr. Leung of my fellow member criticized um, the CRD, but you rebutted him. Uh, yes, you're protecting your um, your colleagues. You are speaking. You and that is uh, that is right. But it's a job to get to the bottom of this as legislators. Sometimes we may not be um, extremely polite. But we represent the public to get to the bottom of the truth. Mr. Pei, you sat here a number of times, so you should behave um, as if you are walking on thin ice, to, or to be always on your guard and to be very cautious so that you will not repeat what uh, Mr. Tong did. And. Miss Mu, you, you told the commissioner that well, for uh, did I go? Uh, you need to turn it. You needed to turn him turn him down. But for Li Jiang, you did not say anything. In the morning, there was a meeting with the procuratorate, but in the afternoon, there were two activities related to sightseeing. Was public money used? Yes, the itinerary was uh, arranged by the other party, but Hong Kong public money was used. There are two different practices for the two visits. Both. 
visits were coordinated by the CRD. If you ask me, I'd say that it's not ideal. It was not ideal, and yes, the commissioner should have been reminded. But I could not remember what I did because we're talking about the ninth of January. Well, you said you could not recall that you have、um, advised him or not. But in the end, he gave the approval to participate in the add-on at、um, uh, entertainment. You could not remember. I really cannot remember. I love your answer. You said that it was not ideal. Of course, it was a bit of a sophistry. You said it was not ideal, so there is、uh, an. You well for words like it's not ideal. There is a room for improvement. It's more like、uh, like the catchphrase of officials. And you also said you could not remember. I don't require an answer. I want it recorded. In paragraph three point two one in the IRC report, the former commissioner hosted a luncheon for staff members of the RTHK. And the relevant offices charge it to public funds. Can you find it? Charge charge it to the official entertainment vote is、uh, actually paragraph three point two two. At that time, when、uh, Fanny Law. Wang Hongqiu and、um, M. Bruce Lee were commissioners. Well, I don't know whether, Director, you remember there were similar occurrences. Who would you like to take the、um, question, Miss Quan? First, we don't have the information. This is a non-compliance pointed up in the IRC report. Yes, I see the word non-compliance, but you were asking about previous commissioners whether there was similar occurrence. I don't have the information with me. Perhaps、uh, you can retrieve the information and get back to us. Miss Mu, would you like to answer? I really don't know. Can you find?、Uh, can you check to see if there was、uh, any document, and if there were, if there is, a、uh, gift the same to us, Mr. Wong. In、uh, paragraph three point two 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 three two four, the IRC was of the view that、uh, improvement is required. We reckon that、uh, that will not be a repeat, and of course we would like an undertaking from the commissioner.、Uh, my question was whether. Previous、uh, commissioners have done something similar, and give us the information because it is important. We can make comparisons. Three point three three. The IRC notes that ICAC generally treated cocktail receptions prior to a meal as a separate event from the meal and.、Uh, Find three such cases. The ICAC advised the IRC, as part of its follow-up of the Audit Commission's report, that cocktail reception prior to a meal would also be included as part of the expenditure for the meal in the future. That means, in the past, cocktail receptions before a meal are allowed to be separated. From the meal, into, and this is not in line with the spirit of the revision of the CSO in、uh, July two thousand nine. Is that right, Miss Kwan? We're talking about、um, two diff, two different things.、Uh, cocktail receptions, cocktail receptions are different from alcoholic drinks brought along. The former. Sometimes involve the same party and sometimes different parties. That means 
Parties involved in the cocktail reception may be different from the guests in the meal. So two different uh, groups. Yes, that may be the case. And sometimes um, guests in the receptions would have, will join you um, for the meal and some will not. Is that right? A cocktail reception is different from alcoholic drinks brought along. So the separation of a cocktail receptions from a meal. This is something that you need to improve. That means it was wrong. The approach in the past was wrong. We had there was a misunderstanding about the requirements in this regard. What was the misunderstanding? Whether cocktail receptions should be treated as one single activity um, with the meal. Uh, there were some uh, problems with our understanding. Well, your understanding was that there was a requirement of the ICAC. So you were not there to implement it, and you uh, you could interpret it. The CSO stipulate that when it comes to beverages, tips and food are counted towards the ceiling of entertainment expenditure. But there was no mention about cocktail receptions before a meal and beverages are to be included. There was no stipulated uh, regulations. And uh, so there was no such I no such um, idea in the minds of uh, colleagues. So that so you don't know any. F so there was uh, no concept of uh, recept cocktail receptions uh, being included, beverages, etc. What if there is an ICAC cocktail reception without a meal? Then it will be treated as a separate event. But what about uh, cocktail receptions? before a meal. And you said that one well, there may be different parties involved. But some guests from the reception will join you um for the meal and there will be a single activity. And you said that well uh, that didn't occur to uh, you and your staff but it was wrong. I think that the commissioner has given me an answer by the way he, by his demeanor, and it will not happen again. It will, that will not be a misunderstanding in the future. But why was there a misunderstanding in the first place? Sometimes a reception may be a standalone event, while there are other receptions that will be followed by a meal and uh, because of the different circumstances uh, sometimes they may it may cause confusion among uh, um, the people in the OPS I think uh, your answer is very clear the OPS or the ADM you can interpret the CSO in one way, and when there is a different commissioner or deputy com uh, commissioner, there may be a different interpretation. Now we have the IRC, and it dawned on you that uh, your prior, your mis your understanding in the past was wrong. Can you ask a question, Mr. Wong? Your last question. You may ask one more question. Well, I have a few more. Well, then uh, you wait for your second round. Mr. Kenneth Lung, my first question. Well, this is not a question I um, was going to ask, but uh, I heard in uh, Ms. Mu's answer to Mr. Lung about the purchase of uh, Mu Tai. It is very much related to value for money audit. You said the CRD did not know where to buy Mu Tai, Mu Tai so they uh, asked the ORS. Uh, the OSR to um, buy uh, Mao Tai for you. What would you, your colleagues you use his office hours to buy Mao Tai? Yes or no? I have to uh, go and look. What were you looking for? Whether uh, 
the purchase was made during office hours. Did they have to clock in and out? So you you knew. Do you know or not? And、uh, did they or did did they not? I can't say for sure. They were responsible for buying a multi, but I have no idea when and where they did it. So please support,、uh, supply me with the information. If they use their office hours to buy alcoholic drinks, then from the perspective of a value for money audit, it is a waste of public money. Okay, that is the end of that matter. Now I ask Miss Mu to supply me with、uh, some figures and、uh, information. My second question. Well, I want to refer to the audit report, Chapter Seven. I have the English version, page one, very, very、um, simple. One point, paragraph one point three B. The、uh, director for audit wrote something. It says that. Do you know and training programs for individual target groups, face-to-face -face contact with the community, and the use of mass media? 第一句係咁樣講嘅。嗯。阿處長啊，我想你話俾我。That's the first line. So,、um, director, is this right? 同意。Yes, I agree. You're right. I therefore want to ask you, director. Public support, the public, 甚至係第四句入邊 the community 呢幾個字啊，我定講 public 同 community。你對呢兩個字嘅解讀係乜嘢嘢咧？係乜嘢 ？How do you understand public and community? As for the community relations department. Under the、uh, section 12 of the ICAC ordinance,、uh, our work is、um, spelled out very clearly. We publicise the、uh, adverse consequences of corruption and, so,、uh, and seek their support. The citizens or public, you mean、uh, Hong Kong public, right? I think、uh, that's what、uh, what the law says at that time. What the law said at that time. So is it、uh, the present case?、Uh, it's also for the present. Yes, I think so. I want to ask the director whether you did any overseas duty visit in 2013, the past few months, from January to August. I went to India with、uh, the current commissioner just once, right? Yes. Now, please cast your mind back a little bit. In 2012, did you conduct any overseas visits in 2012? Yes, I did. How many times、um, did you、um, make such visits? Well, I have to count. I give you some time. Um, the director. Now concerning duty visits, once, 2012, right? Yes, thank you.、Um, director, please refer to Gen 14. Now the covering is a letter. The ICAC replied to our questions, page two of Gen fourteen. 
all the way to uh, page 16. Look at the um, right hand corner, right lower corner. Gen 14. Okay, you have it now. Yes, please ask your question. This is Annex 2, which lists from um, December, or rather, um, 10th of, or, or rather, um, 23rd of October 20, 2007 to 19th of October 2011. And that includes the purpose of visits, uh, persons of visits, accompanying um, the uh, commissioner. If we may look at the second item, 20th of November 20, uh, two, uh, 2007. The third column, he says, e -C -R the Director of Commun Communication, um, Community Relations, DCR. Was it yourself, um, or were you, uh, had you assumed office then? 2007, the uh, DCR wasn't me, I was the assistant director. Now, if it was, uh, if the director was mentioned, the assistant director was mentioned, then, um, that was uh, yourself. Would the member repeat his question, please? Now, you were not the director, but you were the assistant director. And if column three said that um, a post of accompanying officers had director, communication relations department, or assistant director, community, community relations department, then that may be, that might be yourself. Correct. Now, if I count the visits from 2007 to 2011, you had about uh, 23 visits accompanying Mr. Tong. Uh, was it correct? If you had count, if you have counted it, uh, then you're right. If you think I have counted it wrongly, then uh, you can dispute that later. 23 visits in comparison with last year, just one visit, 2012, and 2013, just one visit. Don't you think that um, you made 20 odd visits, you failed us, you've let us down, and you've also uh, failed um, to um, meet the requirement of the Director of Community Relations to uh, promote um, anti-corruption. Well, in fact, the Commissioner did uh, commented on this. We um, uh, attended the um, International anti-corruption authorities. We had to provide technical support to other uh, countries and places. And we also established our mainland liaison. We uh, had to work uh, more closely with mainland in terms of anti-corruption interchanges. So according to you, you don't need to do it now. Why you just did it once last year and this year you did it once? And was it because you think that you uh, did, um, you, you thought that uh, in the past what you did uh, was wrong and therefore you have cut down on the number of visits in 2012 and 2013? Now, if you look at, um, the arrangements, uh, yeah, our system, we have to have the approval of the commissioner on uh, as um, if we are to go on duty visits. And the strategy, uh, according to the commissioner, was to step up in exchanges in the area of anti-corruption education with the mainland. With regard to the International Anti-Corruption Conference, uh, our commissioner, 
uh, is of the view that we should continue to go. But as for mainland exchanges, um, we uh, have less and less visits to the mainland. In fact, mainly they, they, they mainly come to us instead. So, Ms. Mu, you just accommodate, accommodate uh, the wish of the commissioner. Mr. Tong wanted to do this, and you thought he was right. Now, yours is community relation department, and the community refers to the Hong Kong community promoting corruption prevention education in Hong Kong. I think you have not done your part advising Mr. Or you had not done your part advising Mr. Tong on your priorities, but you have your own interpretation. Uh, I don't want to uh, belabor this point with you. But in fact, Mr. Leung also asked the question every time when we approved funding to when we approved funding to the ICAC, including uh, CIO, um community relations items. Mr. Leung asked whether the money uh, had been spent on tourism or visits leading to criticisms in the audit report and they had organized less community relations or corruption prevention uh, act, uh, functions. Uh, you you can, should ask the question from the perspective of value for money. Yes, Chairman, I'm getting uh, to the point of value for money, but I will not belabor the point on the number of visits. It is still on visits, not on the number, but on what uh, was done. Uh, Gen 35, a reply by the ICAC. Yes, yes, uh, just a minute, Kenneth. Would you look at um, Appendix 1, or rather Annex 1, Annex 1. Now, members mentioned Yunnan, Sichuan, why we focus attention on these two, because in May and in June at the hearing we mentioned that with regard to Mr. Tong's visits and also the extras, there are too many of them to be written down. And on Annex 1, there were nine visits and four. After going to Beijing, um, they went to, he went to Nanjing and Suzhou in C. He went to uh, Beijing, then Nanling, Nanling and Guilin and then E to Hangzhou, and then H, Beijing, and then uh, Changsha of Hunan. Uh, Ms. Mu, now you've seen this. I just want to ask you, with regard to these itineraries, were they arranged by you or the CRD? Or were they arranged by the mainland ministries or departments? Uh, Ms. Mu, on the first item, Beijing, Nanjing, Suzhou, China. I had to check the information for the details. Now, the mainland liaison unit uh, was responsible for the details. I was not responsible for that, although I was the AD. I was re uh, responsible for the uh, uh, district offices. Beijing, Nanning, and Guilin. I wasn't the director. I was only the AD. At that time, I was um, instructed to follow the Beijing delegation. But uh, and you can see that there was a tight itinerary. As for the details, I think uh, you have to ask the mainland liaison unit on the uh, details. As for Hangzhou, uh, that was the uh, Sihu Forum. Uh, uh, the commissioner had to go there to give a speech. Um, that was also about uh, anti-corruption education. Therefore, I also went there. 
uh, we went to Hangzhou. Kenneth, what about H to Changsha? You can see uh, we we had to lecture there. Uh, that is um, an exchange with the courts of Changsha, and the itinerary uh, was also tight. Whether the itinerary was tight or not uh, was not the question. The question was whether it was necessary. Now you went to Beijing, you visit the procuratorate. Um, but as for going to Suzhou, Guilin, Hangzhou, Changsha, uh, uh, is it just is it a, a, a visit plus a lecture? I was not present with the Beijing Nanjing Suzhou trip, but I can uh, comment on the following: when we go to, when we went to Beijing and Changsha, it was uh, anti-corruption. Uh, education and corruption prevention. Now you didn't go to Guilin and Suzhou, but let us uh, talk about uh, Hangzhou. Item E. Fourteenth uh, of November two thousand eight and seventeenth of November two thousand eight, Friday to Monday, the forum, um, the main part of the forum on Saturday and on Monday. The program lasted for four days. If you may turn to page thirteen, this is the uh, um, uh, first C Who Anti Corruption Forum, Appendix Five. Um, official duties: Saturday morning opening ceremony. Commissioner delivered speech at the ceremony. I don't know for how long. Maybe just ten or fifteen minutes, and then uh, director, uh, you made a speech on the sixteenth of November, Sunday. For the rest of the time during those four days, what were you doing? Well, I was present. There were experts giving um, the spe giving speeches at the forum. But what about Mr. Tong? Where was he? On the first day, Mr. Tong was present. When I gave a speech, Mr. Tong shouldn't be. Uh, Mr. Tong was not uh, present, I guess. But I really cannot uh, recall. Um, he attended which part of the forum? I, I have to ask my colleagues. I just want to be. Make a, I just want to make a fair comment, Mr. Pei. Mr. Pei, according to this paper, and according to your latest uh, guidelines on visit, can this four-day forum be shortened? Can the um, number of personnel accompanying the director, the, the commissioner, be reduced? Uh, he just gave a short speech. According to the data, Gen 14, page 6, apart from Mr. Tong, the commissioner, the then commissioner, there were three colleagues going to this Hangzhou um, Sihu Anti Corruption Forum. Gen 14, page 6, that uh, was about the Sihu Anti Corruption Forum. Three other colleagues went for four days. Mr. Pei? Can you uh, interpret the latest guidelines for us? Do you allow such a long overseas visit, Chairman? Uh, to a certain, to a great extent, it depends on the participation required of the commissioner. Apart from the opening ceremony, uh, is he required to? Uh, was he required to attend the forum? Uh, it's difficult for me to comment. As for the accompanying officers, the new guidelines uh, that the number should be as less as small as possible, and uh, the uh, officers uh, should go on a need basis. We should minimize the number of accompanying officers. Thank you. Let us turn to Mr. Tong's. Application uh, form Gen twenty two 
page 123. Um, Jen 22, page 123. Yes, go on. Um, the, uh, it's a Friday, the um, 14th of November, um, a morning flight, I guess. Uh, he arrived at, uh, at Hangzhou, and then and he returned on Monday. He returned on Monday. So he returned on the 17th, and then according to the application form that he submitted to the C chief executive, he only referred to um, the 11th to the 16th. All right, uh, if it's a half-day trip, then it would not be regarded as a duty visit. All right, he spent half day in Hangzhou and half day in Hong Kong, but then uh, he did not include the 17th. So I do not know which colleague helped Mr. Tong in preparing this application. Was it um, deliberately? Uh, was it um, misleading to the chief executive? Because uh, in fact, um, on uh, well, on the 14th and on the 17th, he actually was not in Hong Kong. Who can answer this question? Chairman, well, the application form was signed by Mr. Tong himself. That's why for the other colleagues, uh, they did not have a chance to have um, uh, a glance of that uh, form. That's why we are not in a position to answer the question. All right, Mr. Tong will be coming again, so please leave that to Mr. Tong. All right, another visit, which has to do with duty visit. Can I also refer members to the report by the IRC, Roman 7, para 31. Thirty-one a Yesterday, Mr. Tong admitted that uh, for the Brazilian trip, uh, the two officers uh, had their air passages upgraded uh, to business class, and he admitted that uh, it was an administrative error or blunder. So, Mr. Pei, can you explain why there was this mistake? Ms. Kwan? Ms. Kwan? Concerning the visit to Brazil, indeed. At the time, the colleague responsible for procuring the air tickets, uh, he was negligent because according to the CSR, well, for long-haul flights, generally speaking, approval would be given for upgrading the air ticket to business class, but then they will have to go through the sub approval procedure and the officer responsible for procuring the air tickets because um, the schedule was rather tight and there was uh, negligence on their part. They did not seek the approval before procuring the air tickets. So uh, is there any regulation under the CSO regulating this? Yes, indeed. But then you did not follow the CSO. They did not follow uh, through the procedure under the CSO. But then uh, they could upgrade the class of tickets because under the CSL, for long haul flights are uh, exceeding nine hours. So they did not go through the approval procedure, so that's a violation of CSO. Well, they did not follow the CSO. All right. So um, you did not follow um, CSO. And then uh, 31B, there were 14 duty visits. And um, you also uh, designated certain airlines in uh, inviting quotations. So does that mean that uh, when there are duty visits, you will have to get quotations from different airlines? Uh, was it a standing practice? Ms. Kwan, well, according to government's uh, procurement guidelines, so yes, we will have to get quotations. But then, in this case, you have not done that. So whose responsibility was that? Uh, because we're talking about not just once or twice, we're talking about 14 duty visits. Did somebody tell you that uh, you do not have to follow the rule and I prefer this particular airline? Was that the case? Ms. Kwan, all right. So is processed uh, by our supply, uh, supplies office colleagues. Uh, so um, where would they take the orders from? Who would give instructions to them? All right. Uh, 
the supplies office is under the um, administration branch. In other words, you will be monitoring the work of the supplies office. How come on 14 occasions uh, where there were duty visits, uh, there was uh, this violation, and yet the uh, ADM were not, was not aware of that? Ms. Kwan? Well, this is done by the uh, frontline clerical officers. Well, they did invite uh, quotations, but then in the course of inviting quotations, they specify the airlines and flights. All right, uh, the spirit of seeking quotations is to get more than one quotation. If you just uh, get a quotation of one particular airline, that's not meaningful at all, Director. Director? Well, in seeking or inviting the quotation, they got the quotations uh, from different agencies. They did met, they did get more than one quotation. All right, I have this assumption. The reason why they have to specify this um, airline, all right, according to the same report by the IRC. Para F. It says that, uh, well, for the duty visit, um, for the uh, mileage awards that um, the officer can win, they will have to be declared to the ICAC. So you might not be concerned about this. Well, during the 35 duty visits uh, for the mileage uh, awards uh, uh, earned by Mr. Tong, how was that being dealt with? Uh, so can you provide information to us, Ms. Kwan? All right, according to the records, Mr. Tong accumulated about uh, 31,000 uh, miles, and uh, for 30,000 out of that, that was already used uh, on duty visits. So the Mileage was uh, claimed uh, for other duty visits by other colleagues. All right, uh, I finished with my questions for the time being. Yes, Paul, you can ask in the second round. All right, um, well, to follow on uh, from what Mr. Leung was asking, all right, looking at the IRC report 2.8b, para 2.8b. It should be uh, on page 10 of the English version. Well, 2.8b says that yet there are rules and regulations um, on upgrading air passages and so on. But then there is also this remark here. For the commissioner and the deputy commissioner, well, if they are taking flights for less than four hours, then they would be encouraged to downgrade their seats uh, so that they would be flying on economy class. All right, uh, different departments have been doing this, but then I'd like to know, all right, uh, has there, has that happened? So much so that for the commissioner and deputy commissioner, they would be downgrading their flights uh, to economy class. Has that been done? Ms. Kwan, I don't have the information with me. I'll have to go back and check. Well, you don't have to check. I'm sure uh, that has never been done. But then, uh, of course, uh, it's good if you can check. All right, uh, you encourage them to do so because uh, that's in line with the spirit of um, frugality. Um, but I'm sure they have not done it before. Okay, another point that I'd like to ask about is whether it's Mr. Tong or Ms. Mu. From time to time, you refer to this particular paragraph. In the PAC report, uh, 3.24, if you don't um, mind, please turn to para 3.24. I would also like the Audit Commission to read this paragraph, because according to my understanding, so this paragraph refers to a particular CSO, and apparently it suggested that uh, there is some grey area under that CSO. So it's about the scope and the definition and so on. All right, um, 3.24 has drawn this conclusion, apparently the relevant CSO is not clear and therefore in the eyes of uh, Timothy Tong, he called that a grey area and Ms. Mu also referred to this uh, this morning and uh, she apparently was suggesting that uh, there were um, ambiguities about this CSO, that's why it's not about um, one country, two systems, it's about uh, one provision with two different interpretations. So my question for the Audit Commissioner or Audit Director is, when you made the conclusion in 3.24, well, that would already cover the uh, 2007 July CSO amendment. So were you aware of that? Were you aware of the amendment in July 2007? Well, we refer to that, and uh, we looked at this particular CSO, and it also 
refer to entertainment expenses, and that would that should ex that should include beverages um, costs. But then, as I said earlier, the so-called grey area in that CSO, according to our understanding back then, was that uh, was for for some entertainments. Well, for beverages consumed at the time of the entertainment, if um, that was uh, done at a different time and at different venues, as to when the two expenses should be uh, shown, the CSO was not clear in spelling that out. That's why, in this respect, we made a comment or recommendation to the commissioner, and. Uh, our recommendation was that uh, they should tighten it up so that uh, for areas that were not clear, they should be made clear. Thank you, Director, for your comment. But then apparently, with regard to the procurement of liquor, when and how they should be included, well, there's a grey area. But then it's not about uh, the CSO itself that uh, is not clear in the wording. Is that right? Well, in terms of the wording, well, it's clear. But then in terms of the expression and interpretation of that provision, well, at the time when we talked to the CRD about this, well, we held different views on that. I think it's not uh, the uh, problem of a particular individual. All right, after the amendment to the CSO, the audit commission did not take a second look on on this. So you ignore this amendment to the CSO. We were not aware of this uh, prior change. So when we looked at it. I'll have to ask the um, assistant director to explain what happened. Well, when we conducted the audit check, well, we made reference uh, to two major events, and uh, those were held in 2011. And uh, when we looked at the CSO, well, we had to look at uh, the CSO applicable to the time when this happened, and uh, the CSO wording, when compared to the 2009 version. For food, beverages, and tips, well, they were identical in the wording. So we apply that criteria, and then I'd like to say that uh, in para three point two four, we made a comment and uh, we included a bracket there. And the reason why we thought that uh, there's a need to clarify this because we did refer to three point two three a in that report. Well, after listening to. The explanation by the CRD on the event held on the sixth of November, twenty eleven, and how the entries were made, so they had this understanding mm -hmm. that was somewhat different from the CSO and our understanding. That's why we made that decision, and since they had a different interpretation, that's why we felt that uh, there's a need for the CSO to be clarified. That's why we use that wording, Mr. Chair. All right, on the activity held in twenty eleven. Of course, uh, that was after the amendment to the CSO because that was done in July 2009, uh, in in 2007. In other words, the revised wording applied to that event. Yes, um, for the reasons and background to the amendment in 2009, we were not aware of that. So there's a there is some room to maneuver. But then, referring to the uh, definition back in July 2009, let's assume that. Uh, well, um, the way you just explained that because you did not look at it, that's why there is this discrepancy. But then, uh, as far as the CRD is concerned, they should be aware that after July twenty o nine, the new definition came into force, and that's why they should not have uh, committed uh, this negligence or omission, and as a result, uh, the application would not cover uh, the. Um, uh, liquor procure in advance. We are not saying that uh, we agree with their um, practice, or else we would not have made this comment. We are of the view that uh, the spirit of the CSO should be complied with. But then, they said that uh, in dealing with the event held on the sixth of November, twenty eleven, as to how the expenses were entered into the record, they had a different in interpretation. And given the fact that they had a different interpretation, and also the CSO, we suggested that uh, maybe uh, it's good to uh, 
uh, clear things up um, in the CSO, but then you have ignored the revision to the CSO in 2007. Apparently, you're opening the door or the gate, the, the floodgate to Mr. Tong and so on. All right, you said that there's a, a gray area, there are loopholes, um, and therefore they are just uh, following the um, CSO. So can you clarify this? Because you came to this conclusion because you did not look at the new definition under the new version in July 2009. Is that right? Yes, you're right. Because uh, we did not get to the uh, background to this. All right. I'd now like to turn to Ms. Mu on the recent um, hearings, we have heard different versions uh, from Mr. Tong and from Ms. Mu. You just uh, came forward that, uh, all right, you would take up the responsibility and uh, uh, you would take up the blame, all right, uh, whether or not you are buying uh, beef brisket and also fish balls and uh, procurement of air tickets and so on. Of course, it's not the two of you. I'm referring to Mr. Tong and you, Ms. Mu, who would be doing this uh, personally. Of course, there would be different layers of uh, personnel doing this. So. Which level of uh, staff would be doing this? For example, who bought the uh, beef brisket and also the fish balls? Well, I'd like to say that uh, in the report, it pointed out uh, many things. Uh, for example, uh, the procurement of uh, beef brisket uh, and also the uh, eagle ornament and so on. Well, not everything was bought by the CRD. Well, other than pointing, uh, think, uh, pointing the finger at uh, the CRD, which did the procurement, well, other departments were not named in the report. It's not uh, that uh, everything was brought or bought uh, by the CRD. Yes, Ms. Kwan? Sorry? What's the question? All right, uh, we are aware of uh, who's the head, uh, who is not, who has now come forward uh, and indicated that uh, he or she would be taking up the responsibility. But then I'd like to know: Well, in the ICAC, uh, well, well, other than uh, uh, doing publicity and education on anti-corruption and also investigating into corruption-related um, complaints and so on. Well, how many of the ICAC staff were deployed uh, on buying air tickets, uh, beef briskets, and also tedious things like that? All right, the commissioner has been rather autocratic in a sense that uh, he's asking people to uh, go around and uh, buy things for him. Ms. Kwan, all right, if our colleagues have to buy things uh, for uh, official purposes, then of course uh, the relevant uh, colleague responsible for that task would be doing that. Which department? Well, it depends. It depends on the nature of the task. For example, if it's a duty visit or if we are receiving a guest, if it's done by a particular department, if there is a receiving department, then of course uh, the colleagues from that department would be responsible for that procurement. And of course, as far as the um, ADM is concerned, we have the supplies office, which will provide assistance. And where there are um, receipts or invoices, they will have to submit them or pass them on to the uh, supplies office and also the finance office uh, for the reimbursement. So for the one doing the procurement, it depends on which department is organizing that activity. All right, if it's the um, CPD or if it's uh, ops, uh, if it's a duty visit, uh, uh, made by the ops and so on. If a souvenir has to be presented, then the department's uh, staff will deal with that. Okay, looking at the IRC report, uh, annexes uh, 4 and 5, well, some of these are gifts are presented by the commissioner or the um, or is uh, commission wide. And uh, just now, Ms. Kwan also said that, uh, well, di different departments uh, would deal with activities organized by them. But then for commission-wide uh, gifts and also commission um, or personal gifts are presented by the commissioner who will be responsible, Ms. Mu, what is not the responsibility of the CRD. As Ms. Kwan just said, with regard to duty visits by the commissioner or his activities and also his entertainment, all right, on the particular day, it might involve a particular department. It depends, all right, uh, if the target uh, is uh, ops, or the operations department, then the operations department would arrange for staff to take care of that. All right. So, well, for the departments under your coordination, whether it's uh, a visit to Li Jiang or any scenic spot, or if he has to present um, uh, gifts uh, worth uh, co uh, costing several thousand dollars, who would be responsible for that? In relation to duty visits, 
Well, I should put it this way. When it comes to souvenirs, uh, it's under the responsibility of the mainland liaison office for special gifts. The commissioner might ask um, people to help him. Whom? Um, there will be the uh, OSR. So they will have to uh, conduct a strategic st um, a research on what gifts to buy. Well, for fish balls and uh, beef briskets, uh, they are not done by the CRD. Okay, the ORS, they have done some research uh, to find out what gifts to buy for officials in Lijiang. And um, so, did the commissioner go to did the commissioner go to uh, buy it and then claim it back, or did uh, some some people, or maybe you go, you went to buy it and then you maybe you may be very good and haggling uh, down the price? But I retract that. I retract that. I apologize. Let me clarify that I have never bought any uh, gifts given away by the commissioner. Uh, when it comes to ICAC giving uh, uh, gifts uh, in duty visits, uh, there is a there is a procedure. Oh, there is a procedure. Prior to the duty visit, there will be a meeting about the um, content uh, and also what kind of souvenirs to be given are to be given if the commissioner was of the view that uh, he would like certain gifts that he might raise it in the meeting. Uh, some other times he might, through his assistance, um, liaise with the mainland liaison office or the relevant party. Where we talk about discussion, the ORS, um, and also meetings, the OSR, but it's rather confusion. Does it mean that um, as long as the commissioner takes responsibility, then that will be the end of the matter? Is it the case that uh, different levels from top down ignore rules and regulations? But when it comes, so uh, they will stick to the CSR when it comes to arresting civil servants. But when it comes to their own rules, they will flaunt it that they will flaunt them. We see from this incident that there are inadequacies. Our colleagues are actively pursuing it, following it up. Sorry, there is a line to take by the uh, IRC report. It says that there is nothing wrong with the culture or the system. It's just uh, down to um, a particular commissioner. So have you consider? Um, well, using the words of uh, Mr. Raymond Wong, you succumb to his authority, or he's um, um, quite a tyrant, so you just follow his words. Or you decide that, um, well, Jiu uh, Go is not proper, so it should be turned down, but whereas uh, Yunnan is all right. Is it the case that uh, you have um, a very a good reputation uh, externally when it comes to ICAC, but when it comes to the inside, it's all a mess? I cannot answer on behalf of Mr. Tong, but when it comes to uh, giving of uh, gifts in the May or July, we had a, we had a new guidelines. Uh, Unless they are souvenirs with standard souvenirs with the logo of ICAC, we will not give any other gifts. And where possible, we will not even give the standard souvenirs or gifts. So there will not be a, re a repeat of what happened. Well, I understand. I understand about the new guideline. But I'd like to ask, well, what kind of ICAC was, uh, was it? Just when you took office, all the way from the commissioner down to uh, deputy uh, commissioner, what kind of um, structure are we were we looking at? Can you share your experience with us? 
Miss Mu, I can tell you that every one of us put our heart into it to do our work. Of course, I understand that you put your heart to it when you're resting someone else. Uh, is it the case that the ICAC is do as I say, not as I do? There is a system in the ICAC, and the, sis the uh, system was followed. And as to whether there are some people who do who did not follow the system, I can tell you that there is none, because according to the procedure, uh, you have to seek approval from the commissioner. But it doesn't mean that you follow the system. Talk about uh, a brief uh, bris uh, beef briskets and stuff like that, and tendon. So is it? the case that as long as you have the approval of the commissioner, you are licensed to do whatever you want to do? Uh, no, definitely not. I can't tell. I can't say. I can't answer in relation to whether it was a brisket or tendon. It's nothing to do with the CRD, but I don't know what uh, went on in other departments. When it comes to gifts, I only knew about it when I read the report. And who did it? So it's nothing to do with the CRD, just like the uh, chairman said, it's the fault of society. So there is a system, is that right? Oh, I, I've given you an example. Say, a duty visit. There was a meeting. Uh, the commissioner would um, agree that uh, there should be some exchange of certain gifts or souvenirs, but on some occasions he might say that um, we needed food. Say, for example, some Hong Kong a local brand, some local delicacies. Well, let's use Li Jiang as an example. On the ninth. He received the invitation, but you did not have time by then to change the itinerary. On the 10th, the commissioner departed. So using this example, can you explain to us who made the decision to buy what? Just apply what you said to this example. Without doing that, it's difficult for us to understand that there was a system. Okay, the commissioner left on Friday, and you had to make these arrangements. Who made the decision? Where did you come up with? From where did you come up with the gifts? Well, prior to the duty visit, there was a meeting dis discussing on the known itinerary. Say, for example, the Beijing part about the exchange of gifts with um, with um, the ins the organizations, and the co this, the commissioner would decide whether to use our own uh, ICAC souvenirs, and that has been dealt with. But what about Li Jiang? Was there a system to follow? We're not concerned ourselves with what the gifts were. And if there was a system, how was it followed? Well, if there is one bad, uh, one black sheep, it will, the whole team will be affected. We are trying to find to get to the bottom of the truth. It's not a matter of criticizing Mr. Tong. We've had a number of hearing hearings with been trying to understand what happened and why. The ICAC abide, are suppose, is supposed to abide by the law, and this is something important. But now we see that uh, something has something has happened. Is it because someone has given uh, an order, or is it a change of culture? We have got the documents, and we see that there is a system, there are rules and regulations. And we have finished with our first draft. But then we read the IRC report. We found that there are discrepancies from what we 
came to know during the hearing. So we want to know where in the system went wrong. We want to find out whether it's the problem of an individual or the system itself. Because when it comes to a report, we have to look forward. But as the commissioner said, that you have to look forward, but um, remember the and learn from past mistakes. Commissioner may commissioners may come and go, but the system stays. We're trying to find the truth. We're not asking you. Uh, we are not trying to ask you to testify against Mr. Tong. We are concerned with the system. We are not concerned with what you've bought. And and that's why, in general, there uh, there is a meeting. And before the departure in the meeting, we would discuss about um, gifts, and then we will we will make preparations using the example of Li Jiang. We got ourselves some spare souvenirs because we only knew that there was a ministry of uh, supervision and also the procuratorate, but we did not know what other uh, procuratorates or uh, organizations we would meet. So we have to be prepared by getting some spare uh, gifts. Gifts. Sorry, just a minor point. Since there are Rules. Well, some non Hong Kong officials love tendon and brief kit. I don't think that in your system there will be an arrangement for giving briskets and tendons as gifts. So it's nothing to do with the system. We try to understand it. well the tendon and briskets are small things. But we see from this minor spec uh, that the image of uh, the ICAC was tarnished. Tendon and briskers may be of interest to Mr. Tong, but it's our interest to look at the system. Before I ask questions, uh, I would like you to draw your attention to page 8, um, paragraph 2.6, footnote 3. Well, the ICAC always pride, them, pride themselves the, that they are whiter than white. So in 1996, uh, there was uh, a policy when it comes to giving of gifts. Uh, they will be reduced to a minimum, and uh, that will be to organizations and not individuals. Let's look at footnote 3. So. It is an ICAC staff circular number 23 stroke 96. This uh, was later incorporated into CSO. So it's a very clear policy. Everyone in the ICAC should know, in particular, s uh, more senior staff members and those in the management. Given that, why would we see so many non-compliances uh, with these gifts, Ms. Kwan? In relation to the circular in '96, it was uh, incorporated into the CSO and put under uh, the giving and receiving of interests or benefits. It was mentioned that we have to avoid um, offering and receiving gifts and to reduce uh, the giving of gifts between organizations. This is put under the chapter of receiving and get the giving of receiving of gifts. So maybe the staff members may not be fully aware of it. 
Ms. Kwan, you are saying that CSO should regulate both giving and receiving of gifts. It's just that um, the staff members were not fully aware of it. Ms. Kwan, well, this is put under giving and receiving of gifts. This is to remind members not to receive and give uh, gifts in their line of uh, business. So yes, uh, Mr. Wong's observation was right. So you should be, you should know full well that both the receiving and the giving of gifts are regulated. So you you are very clear about it. What about Miss Mu? Miss Mu, I know about the regulation. So is your understanding the same as that of Miss Kwan, that the giving and receiving are the same? As Miss Kwan pointed out, the emphasis was on receiving under C under the CSO. Well, that's your understanding. The CSO regulates both the giving and receiving of, of gifts. Is that in line with your understanding? Well, I don't particularly concern myself with myself with the give with the giving. Well, I'm not talking about whether uh, it. What is your concern? Whether, but whether your understanding is the same as that of Miss Kwan. As far as I understand, yes, they are the same. Well, I only t I'm only talking about the CRD and um, the um, units dealing with uh, duty visits or the uh, research of mainland policies. Uh, do they have the same understanding? I think they should uh, have that understanding. The fact is the the same. Well, I like uh, brooches, but it seems that you love brooches as well. You bought um, gold shape, uh, $2,700, and uh, the other one is uh, $1,400 of uh, different animal shapes. This goes against your CSO when in terms of the amount and the giving of gifts. The CSO states that... Um, the, that should be reduced and it should be confined to between organizations. Well, the brooches, uh, to whom are they given? Where? NX4. Ornaments. You're talking about the ICAC uh, pin? Well, I see um, page 61 is the gold shape ornament, and the other one is tiger shape ornament. For the gold shape ornament, it's an ornament. Kind of like a mental piece. In general, for duty visits, uh, we will use um, gifts recommended by. Uh, the, the government say, for example, uh, Hong Kong skyline. In general, that would cost uh, two thousand dollars. During that particular vis duty visit, the commissioner said that we've already given quite a lot of uh, that uh, Hong Kong skyline, and whether we could use a uh, gift uh, of a similar value in the exchange. You said that the general practice is to give away Hong Kong skyline ornaments uh, costing about 2000 Now, we're talking about an exchange of uh, gifts during a duty visit. Well, I've been around the block for quite some time, and I also know about the practice on the mainland. But the ICAC is the ICAC. You promote uh, a culture of whiter than white, better than other government departments. That's why you have the CSO. But what you did uh, goes against um, 
the CSO of the ICAC, and you made it sound like the giving of a $2,000 Hong Kong Skyline model is nothing. I was talking about duty visit, not when people come to us and uh, we will give them give the skyline out indiscriminately. We're talking about special occasions in a duty visit where there was um, an exchange of gifts. When it comes to the gold shape ornament, it was uh, with uh, Guangdong Province. Sorry, I have to extend this by 15 to 30 minutes. Sorry, I interrupted you, Miss Mu. Please continue. So, in, in its stead, the gold shape ornament was given in the exchange of gifts. And about the tiger shape ornament, it's nothing to do with the CRD. I did not know why there was a tiger shape ornament purchased. It was only when I saw it that I knew it was bought. But yes, uh, sometimes I ask for, uh, about individual um, circumstances and some in general. CSO, does it apply only to Hong Kong? And when an ICAC officer goes out of Hong Kong, he's not bound by the CSO and can do whatever he or she wants. That is not true. But according to you, this is a duty visit. So despite the fact that it was made clear in the CSO that uh, uh, exchange of gifts uh, should be reduced to a minimum and uh, kept to a low cost and between um, organizations, you did, against, you did something against it. In footnote 3, number 23, stroke 96, is the giving and receiving of gifts on, on official occasions. But, but that was a, a circular, and then later it was incorporated into CSO, in, into Part 1, Chapter 9, Section 3. So it was, so it was changed. So there was the same restrictions even after it was incorporated into the CSO. So that's within that s scope. We're talking about a system. Who caused the uh, system to collapse? Of course, not you, but we want to find out uh, what happened. We will continue. We will keep asking until we get to the truth. The only person who has the power is, or who had the power, is Mr. Tong. Now you, the system is there. The system is all there. We have asked you all the morning. Well, there, there, are, there is a CSO and there are circulars. How can you explain? Uh, you said you don't know. The system is there, and you work according to the system, right? Well, I know the system, but it also said that if it is an exchange between uh, organizations, the exchange should be made from organizations to organization. That's only part two. The part one says that the um, value should be as uh, small as possible. I find it strange that you generally uh, gave out $2,000 Hong Kong Skyline model. You think that is suitable and is not in breach of the CSO? No. Now, usually we gave a trophy, and if people come to visit us, that's the uh, ICAC, uh, crystal, um, ICAC building crystal model. And the trophy was about um, a few hundred dollars as well. But in the past, we did uh, give out Hong Kong Skyline model. Uh, we we didn't bought, we don't just bought it now. It seems that there are some contradictions in the evidence. Now you said that it was ordinary. Uh, it was quite often to give out Hong Kong Skyline model. The commissioner said that it was too common. We should take uh, we we should ha uh, make some exception and. And um, gave out and gave out tiger shape ornaments, goat shape ornaments, so on and so forth. I just want to clarify whether uh, CSO is just limited to uh, the uh, 
gifts to be given out. Is your understanding the same as Ms. Kwan when it comes to the CRD? Is that just another rule, or you can just ignore the rule? You don't need to follow uh, 569, Form 569, just like buying wine. We have never ignored the CSO. Now, even if there is the CSO and we uh, read the CSO, now when you exchange gifts with organizations, there are differences. It's not that we generally give out gifts of two thousand dollars or two thousand odd dollars in exchanging gifts with other organizations. We did uh, give out such uh, gifts when you visit uh, when you conduct duty visits. Overseas, you have to you you exchange the uh, gifts, and we uh, did provide the information to the FC, and you should have uh, noted that. Now, how do you understand the CSO? The policy of the Commission is to limit to the minimum the exchange of gifts on official occasions, where an exchange. Of gifts is unavoidable. A particular on a particular occasion, the exchange should be made from organization to organization. Now, in Annex Four, we have seen many gifts which goes contrary to the um, principle. Say, for example, digital photo frames, eight counts, uh, wine, also uh, silk uh, scar uh, scarf. Uh, so on and so forth. They are not organization to organization gifts. Have you uh, ever given out such gifts? Uh, well, I have never given out such gifts. According to what you know, has the uh, CRD given out such gifts? With regard to personal gifts, the CRD has never given out scarfed or wine as for goat. Uh, the goat is an ornament. It's in uh, organization to organization. Now, in the uh, visits you arrange or organize, have you ever bought such gifts? Something are uh, instructed by the uh, commissioner. Say, for example, scarf. That uh, was the instruction by the um, commissioner to a staff member. It was not bought by me. Was it uh, his secretary or his girlfriend or who? Uh, do you know? Uh, with regard to the mainland liaison unit, probably he uh, directly told the mainland liaison unit if it was not in, uh, not related to the CRD, then he might uh, talk to the co he may he might instruct the colleague directly. If we check the uh, bills or receipts, to uh, will we be able to know who buy those gifts or who bought those gifts? Ms. Mu, you take the responsibility. Uh, you, uh, you, 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 sh you. I think um, we are trying to get to the truth concerning uh, CSO section, uh, CSO Commission Sending Order Part One. It is very clear here. Part one, chapter nine, section three is very clear. We are not criticizing the system nor the uh, staff members. The point is that the system is not observed. If you may look at Gen three, Gen three, page thirty one. Look at it. And also, Mr. Chair, asked for the vouchers, receipts. Um, can we see who approved um, and who uh, did the purchase? Uh, Ms. Kwan, uh, could you uh, give us um, those receipts and vouchers? Uh, Paul, finally. Now, uh, for uh, 569 form, you've given your. Um, um, written uh, your, your speaking note. It wasn't part of the CSO, and you think 
that you can make your own decision and you can ignore the form. But the CSO, in respect of buying gifts, as part of the CSO, shouldn't it be observed strictly? And if there is any breach, how should that be dealt with? I think it's for the ADM to answer the question. They know more about the CSO. Ma'am Kwan. Um, that was mentioned uh, several times. Uh, there would be an internal investigation if there is a breach of the CSO, and if it is found uh, valid, then a decision will be made as to whether any disciplinary action would be taken. If my, I may follow up. Now, you've explained um, the CSO, but not everything is governed by the CSO. Say, for example, Form 569 uh, is a form for uh, streamlining the procedures. Um, how many rules and regulations are issued without the backing of the CSO and other and any department can flout this um, as they like, just like the uh, five, uh, Form 569. If they're important, they're related to policy, they're important to the integrity of the colleagues, they uh, would certainly be incorporated into the CSO. As for administrative procedures, say for example 569, the purpose is just was just to streamline the procedures and to enhance efficiency. The design itself was not to regulate the integrity or conduct of colleagues, and therefore um, the CSO did not spell out that that part had to be complied with. But for buying uh, wine, that is in the CSO. Yes, buying wine, buying alcoholic drinks. Yes, this is in the CSO. It's not just in the CSO, but it's also something that has to be observed by civil servants. Well, thank you, Chairman. Uh, thank you. I've made use a lot of time. Thank you. And my apologies. Alan. Now, that's lunch time, and uh, we are a bit hungry. If you look at NX4, NX4 of the IRC report, uh, examples of commission-wide gifts. What is interesting is um, beef brisket and fish balls, $815. I want to ask Ms. Kwan or Ms. Mu. According to the CSO, which was promulgated in 1996, beef brisket and fish ball should never be should never appear on the list of commission wide gifts. Do you agree with me or not? In the CSO or in the 1996 circular, uh, there was the uh, policy to limit to the minimum the exchange of gifts. Even if gifts is unavoidable, it should be from organization to organization. That's the overriding principle. Please answer Mr. Leung's question. But if a judgment is to be made, whether that is necessary, whether that is unavoidable, whether it's given to the individual or to the organization, Uh, well, if it was a visit, I believe it was, then it was for the 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 the, the colleague who made the who, who made the decision to uh, consider um, the gifts under this overriding principle. The ADM is only responsible for dealing with the receipts and vouchers. And also uh, for uh, paying the money, and whether it is in line with the rules. If it was the decision of the commissioner, then it was for the commissioner to consider uh, whether it was in line with the principle. It was a judgment there and then. 
Well, I don't intend to ask the witness to speak on behalf of Timothy Tong. I hope the witness focuses on the, the on answering the question. Uh, our time would have been shortened, according to the circular of 1996, or according to the CSO. Do you agree with me that beef brisket? and fishbowl should never be a commission-wide gift. I've heard the reply from Ms. Kwan. I would like to hear from Ms. Mu. I agree with you. That is straightforward, a straightforward answer. Then the next question, why beef, brisket, and fishbowl have uh, had become commission-wide gifts? Where is the problem? Um, Ms. Mu, I didn't buy these things. I couldn't answer. But could could you help us to find out the fact? Now my suggestion is this: Mr. Timothy Tong sign on the receipt. Therefore, it is commission-wide gift and can be paid by public money. Do you agree? Do you agree, Ms. Kwan? Yes or no? Yes or no? You don't need to explain. Yes or no? In dealing with the receipts, we see whether there is a proper approval. An approval by the commissioner uh, was regarded as a proper approval. But you are an administrative department. Shouldn't you look at it from the CSO angle? You you just you you shouldn't just close your eyes, uh, and pay after you see you've seen Mr. Tong's signature. Tell us the truth. You just look at the signature and you pay, and you don't consider anything else. Well, we are responsible for making payments. Usually, these receipts are handled by clerical officers. Uh, they just uh, check whether the uh, receipts and vouchers are correct, and then whether anybody has endorsed it, has approved that, and then they make arrangement for making payments. I'm interested to know. I'm interested in looking at the beef brisket and fishbowl receipts and vouchers. Please find out those um, receipts and vouchers for us, uh, Ma'am Kwan. You can look at the CSO. 2.7. Four hundred dollars per person. Or one officer invited, one gift, four hundred dollars. Two officers invited, one joint gift, six hundred dollars. So eight hundred and fifteen dollars of beef, brisket, and fish ball. Um, we really need to know uh, uh, how many officers uh, were involved. I think um, para 2.7 are not commission-wide gifts. They are gifts um, uh, presented by individual staff members attending wedding or birthday parties. They are not commission-wide gifts. A staff member gives out these gifts on social occasions. This should not be regarded as commission-wide gifts. There must be a definition for commission-wide. Correct me if I'm wrong. And therefore I say beef, brisket, and fishbowl should never be qualified as commission-wide gifts. You understand what I mean? It cannot be a commission-wide gift, or it cannot, or it should not be interpreted as commission-wide gifts. Well, let's look at the uh, receipts for the beef briskets and fish balls. Any other questions? No. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Pei, and also. 
the um, directors. We don't need to come. Uh, we don't need you to come again. We will write to you if we have any further questions. I mean, if we have the need, we may call another meeting and we may ask you to come again. We don't need you to assist us now today. Okay, um, give us some time to uh, digest. Uh, yes, maybe uh, uh, briskets and fish balls. Um, since this is an open meeting, I don't need any uh, stand up uh, to meet the press, and we still have further meetings.